Exploring and enriching our environment, whether through paintings, music, or theater, humans have done this for thousands of years. But why is it so important to us? Why do we feel this need to create art? I had the chance to sit down with a man whose job it is to help facilitate the art process right here in Orange County. Join me now as we go on a gorgeous reflection of the importance of art. I'm Terry Olson, I work for Orange County, the Office of Arts and Cultural Affairs, where I like to call myself Orange County's Chief Arts Instigator. My position where I handle Orange County's investment in, in arts and culture organizations and commissioning of new art for new buildings also gives me a position to bring people together to do things like we've had a citywide um, Orlando Goes Wild about Oscar Wilde or um, the latest has been the creation of Fusion Fest, the celebration of our diversity and the creativity that comes from learning about each other. As humans, we're designed to appreciate and live with beauty of our natural world. And so much of our built world is built for efficiency, which is boring and which is depressing and has a depressing effect on people. For instance, Schools that are clean and bright and have interesting art find that their students do better than schools that are run down or are just plain. So when I came to Orange County a couple decades ago, the chambers that the Board of County Commission met in, for instance, was what I called a beige prison-esque box. Just a big room, big walls, nothing on them. We instituted an Art in the Chambers program, and the mayor and commissioners said, it lowers the temperature of our discourse so much because it's alive. And it's the point is that art engages us in a different way than the logical, rational, efficient way. So in our schools, Students who are engaged in the arts do better on their SATs in math and English. And students, uh, one study, students that were involved in the theater for four years were 40% less likely to engage in any racist or bigoted kind of language or actions and 40% more likely to have friends of a different socioeconomic class than them. But the arts engage our brains. Um, th there's different types of intelligence and the emotional intelligence is something that many people, even in leadership in our country, haven't um, developed very well. The arts can help develop that so that we can relate human to human, so that we can understand the bigger complexities of a world that is not just black and white, but has nuances. Our world really is not just black or white. In fact, we've got countless colors all around us. And Terry explained how he has worked hard to create a unique event to help unite our diverse community. Well, I'll tell you that as I was beginning my professional life, I never thought I would be an expert on diversity. Didn't cross my mind. But um, I did not realize until I got into this uh, some of the statistics that um, the Economic Partnership Study says that by the year 2030, we may be the most diverse city in the world. Our schools have 164 languages spoken in them. And like I mentioned, over 100 heritages participate. So it was about eight years ago, then Mayor Teresa Jacobs was interested in exploring how we might support diversity. Actually, in November of 20, 
16, uh, again, called together, I think we had about 60 people from 40 different self-described heritages, brainstorming, what's the best way to express your culture for others? And we voted on all the things we put up in a festival and a parade were the ones that came to the top. From the beginning, definitely food, merchandise, song and dance, music, spoken word, poetry, fashion, were all part of it. And the festival's grown and there's the cardboard village of the world where the architects create from refrigerator boxes, iconic buildings somewhere around the world. And there's uh, art projects that Creality leads and there's fun and games where you can play different games from around the world. And there's cultural displays and global exchange. So there's lots of things that happen on that Thanksgiving weekend. And it's great to come together and celebrate over 100 heritages participating in that festival. But it's two days of the year. So the program has really grown and expanded to be year round. So on a monthly basis, we do a diversitastic dining experience where we pick a particular culture, choose a particular locally owned ethnic restaurant, and you buy a ticket that gives you the full meal from appetizer to dessert and, and drink. Plus, we put together a cultural program, maybe some music, dance, art, uh, stories from people from that heritage. Um, we do a monthly virtual watch party. Our movie program or our film program each year pairs about 10 to 20 filmmakers with about 10 to 20 people. And they have five days to make a three to five minute film about that person, their heritage, where they come from, what they do to keep up their culture, whether it's a fifth generation Floridian or it's someone that's only been here for five years from um, China or someplace. Also do a bi-weekly diverse orange conversation with somebody that again, we broadcast. So there's a number of things going on throughout the full year now. There are countless ways to get involved with the arts community, and Terry took time to explain why he thinks these types of gatherings just might save the world. As Margaret Mead said, never doubt that one small group of people with a singular mind can change the world. In fact, nothing else ever has. The arts have a way of bringing people together because they speak in a different language. And it's a safe place to explore. In the theater, for instance, it's a safe way to explore other thoughts and lifestyles because you see it on stage as a fiction, and but it's uh, asking you to make some assumptions to follow the storyline. The arts are a good civic unifier, bringing people together. And studies show, again, that people who are engaged in the arts are more civically engaged, live longer, and are healthier in that life. So I do encourage everyone to get involved in the arts, whether it's visual, music, dance, theater. All of it affects our lives in some way probably more in the commercial realm, but you are seeing things that are created visually, you are hearing music, you are seeing drama and comedy, etc. So I encourage people to get out of the house, off the sofa, and get out and experience some things. And in that process, there's a community that you can get engaged with, other people who are having that same experience with you, laughing at the same time you are, crying at the same time you are, being challenged at the same time you are. Overcoming challenges together seems like a very good thing. And I hope you'll take Terry's advice and get out of the house and experience some of these amazing things that we have and celebrate not only how diverse we are, but also that which we have in common. You know, this whole video series is shining a light on what we have in common, and it's leading up to an art exhibit, which will continue to explore these very themes in a visual format. 
I hope you'll join me there June 1st at Mills Gallery. I will be there and so will many of the people I interviewed. I hope you will join us.